So the term quadron is actually a factional term referring to a person with one white and one mulatto parent. Some courts would have considered one-fourth black as well. The quadron balls were social events designed to encourage mixed-race women to form liaisons with wealthy white men through a system of concubinage known as plusage or the placage. Or the placage. <coughs> So the origins of the quadron balls can be traced back to the Dutis de Fili de Colas in Cape Francis in the French colony of San Domingue. So the French colony where the male population actually outnumbered the women, and white women were few and there were few alternatives to prostitution for free women of color. They were known in the Caribbean for their mulatto constans, and they were called mulatto constans whose trademark was actually elegant, say haunty, demeanor, and the demand to be courted, or, or courted. So as there was no brothels in the colony where sex workers could work independently, these balls were put in place where the most exclusive constans met with their client. Having met, they were set up as the official housekeeper, or the manager, or actually openly kept as the mistress if you were actually big pimping. And when their male client died or actually left to settle in France for their retirement, they were normally left with money, property, or even slaves for their future support. A common background for the free colored business women, among whom the most famous were Natalie Prince May, who died in 1784, Annie Laporte, who died in 1783, Simone Bucard, and Julie de Hay. So many refugees from San Domingue came to New Orleans and settled between the outbreak of the Haitian Revolution of 1791 until the Dominican refugee colony in Cuba was ousted in 1809. Both white, black, and free people of color were so new to the placage system in San Domingue and they would go on to introduce a more formalized form of placage as well as the famous quadron balls of New Orleans or New Orleans. I just like New Orleans. So Monique Galori writes about the quadrumbos that took place in New Orleans, the city most strongly associated with the events but not the last city of course. She approaches the balls in the context of the history of the building of the structure of which is now the Bourbon Orleans Hotel. Inside the Orleans Ballroom, a legendary if not entirely factional location for the earliest quadron balls in the state or county or city or whatever New Orleans, whatever you call New Orleans, but city, capital city, yeah. <coughs> so in New Orleans in 1805, Albert Tessare, a refugee from San Domingue, began renting a dance hall where he threw twice a week dances for free quadron women and white men only. This was actually an innovation in New Orleans at the time, as balls for free women of color had been held in New Orleans since the 1790s, but they had been open for both white men and free men of color, the latter of whom who could actually marry the women rather than forming a placage or a placage or even a place with them. And in these new balls where they were exclusively for free quadrant women and white men, it was therefore more closely associated with the placage system or the place system introducing the Dominican introducing a Dominican or Haitian custom to New Orleans besides voodoo so there you go so the quadron balls were elegant and even elaborate designed to appeal to the wealthy white men so although race mixing had been prohibited by New Orleans law as most of the United States at this time it was actually pretty common for white gentlemen to attend the balls and sometimes stealing away from the white balls or I'm a dip from these white balls to mingle with the city's quadron female population. The principal desire for the quadron women attending these balls <coughs> So the principal desire for the quadron women attending these balls was to become a place as a mistress to a wealthy white gentleman, usually from a young white Creole man from Dominican or Haiti, or even a visiting European, so from Europe, I guess. These arrangements were actually pretty common occurrences, Golori would suggest, because the highly educated and socially refined quadron women were prohibited from marrying white men, and they were unlikely to find black men of their own status, because... Slavery, I guess? You know? So the quadron mother usually negotiated with an admirer the compensation that would be received for having the woman as a mistress, 
Typical terms included some financial payment to the parent, financial and or housing arrangements for the quadron herself, and in many cases and in many times, parental recognition and custody of any child the union might produce. Golori points out that some of these matches were actually enjoying and even exclusive as marriages themselves. Sometimes being a quadron mistress was actually the real chick, you know, no side chicks in here. <coughs> the beloved quadron, a beloved quadron mistress had the power to destabilize white marriages and even whole families. Sometimes she was much resented for this, but daddy needs his brown sugar. <laughs> So according to Golori, the system of placage or placage had the basis in the economics of the mixed race. The placage of black women with white lovers, Golori would write, could take place only because of the socially determined value of their light skin, the same light skin that could command a higher price at the slave block, where lighter skinned girls fetch for much higher prices than their prime hand and prime field counterparts or black queens. You know, you gotta love the black queens too. Galori posits the quadron balls were the best among several and severely limited options for the near white women, white women quote quote, a way for them to control their own sexuality and decide the price of their own body. She would contend as well the, the most the mulatto mother and the quadron daughter could hope to attain in the rigid confines of the black and white world was some semblance of economic independence and some social distinction from slaves and the other blacks. She will note that many of the participants in the balls were successful in actual businesses when they could no longer rely on the income from the placage or placage system. She notes that many of the participants in the balls were successful in actual businesses when they could no longer rely on the income of the placage or the placage system. She speculates they had developed business acronyms and acrements from the process of marketing their own bodies. So anyway guys, that is the placard system, mostly for Nina. I decided um, to do a little historical stuff spread out. It doesn't have to be about guns and stuff. It could be about interesting stuff like why Russia did not colonize um, Africa or the War of 1812, which is still war and still part of the channel apparatus, but a bit more non-World War the postmodern stuff because I really kind of hold off on the post, like any games that I can't really, really it used to be a gameplay channel and even if I really went into the film more archive real things there's no archive footage of the war of 1812 Let, let's be real but I guess I could do some really high interesting editing and photo shifting that might actually make it a bit more interesting I'm not gonna really say and talk out of my ass that it might be the best because at the same time it's still the war of 1812 but I'll just try my best to use um, some oil paintings of the time there weren't really the earliest photographs of that era, but I might try and put in some pre, like some early, early photography stuff. Doesn't have to be super, super good. Um, probably like just British soldiers and stuff like that. But um, by the end of the 18th century, the British were kind of moving away from the red coat kind of stuff as well. And the Americans, even though they still had blue, it wasn't like a blue encrusted gold button overcoat and stuff like that. So, by the end, by the time the picture really developed, like a pun, let's go. By the time it really developed for real, um, most of the armies of Europe and America and even Latin America and even some parts of Africa, even though yes, stereotypically they still had line cloth and stuff like that. But most armies, especially in the Anglosphere and stuff like that, were moving towards a more khaki, more earthly color at least, like something that didn't really stand out as much as a red coat would. So um, there's that and um, there's other obviously stuff of other stuff, but um, yeah, it might be good. Um, I might try and do custard. Um, custard is a bit more appropriate because it happened when the photo was actually uh, a good while as old, but it was still news. Some mythical pictures or old paintings of them, especially in the early, um, in the early, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to work around the word genocide, but um, I don't know what to call it, like the Indian Wars that preceded Little Big Horn, I guess, and how Custard was selected to go and run Little Big Horn, so 
That is actually interesting. Um, I have also tried to do this new technique called airflow. I don't know if it's actually called airflow or I don't know, but the guy just said to like when you're talking, when you're talking to like when you're speaking is like basically just blowing out wind. And um, I've actually saw a lot of YouTubers do this, so it'll be different for my accent and um, just trying to keep my mouth open as much as possible. Um, I don't think I'm going too fast, but if I'm going too fast, you could all comment below and tell me so. But I'm, I will still have to edit it because I didn't go through in one swoop. Close though. I was really close. I redid... I redid um, French Colony and um, where the male population outnumbered the women and I did a couple of other stuff but I think I'm gonna be happy with this for now as I said it's like an experiment and um, I'm gonna see where it goes it's only like 10 minutes of, of, of talking anyway so if it's actually that bad at least well you know it's like six minutes so anyway guys I hope you enjoyed I hope you learned something um, if you're like Nina and want to know more about quadron women and balls in general, I would suggest you read about Isabel and Andele Allende, Isabel Allende, and The Island Benefit of the Sea, The Island Beneath the Sea, is a novel about a mixed race slave who was brought to San Domingue. Um, George Washington Cable of 1880 as well, um, William Faulkner. Um, Absol, Absol, Absolom, Absolom. A young man is encountered and engaged to a woman until she finds out that he is already involved with a place in New Orleans and has a child with her. Ooh, so that's like your so opera kind of stuff. Um, it's not just about books; it's about screenplays as well. Um, the house would not stand. Um, that premiered in 2014. So if you don't want to read. Um, Beyonce actually did a song called Formation about it. Haunting of the Octron Mistress, which is a folk tale, probably um, a ghost story. I'm not going to read that. And why I say so is because I had like a night terror last night, so that was kind of freaky, but I was kind of, I don't know, like the first one I had in a while. I was watching, so basically I went to bed, right? But the thing is, right, I actually took a nap. So before then, I was actually sleeping for a long time, so about 5, 4.30, so I woke back up at 10.30 going on to 11 o'clock. I had my laptop out, so I went to do all that and stuff, and I said, you know what, let me watch a little, let me shout him out, let me shout him out, what's his name, what's your name? The Cinephile, the Maniacal Cinephile, I don't know if that's his actual channel name. Um, let me see, let me see, I got, you know I read on the phone anyway, so, you know how it be, boys. Stitch together picks. Yep, that's him. That's him right there. Um, so um, I watched a couple of his videos. I'm not gonna lie. Um, most of my inspiration is kind of from him, and how I really, well, the 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 talking, the talking in a sense. Even though he's Canadian, but the British colonies kind of have this weird thing of that we could talk English, but with a Creole accent. Yes, Canadian, Australian, and New Zealanders have Creole accents. Anything that is a derivative or an accent from the original language is a Creole. So if a Cossack, a Cossack speaks Russian, that is Cossack Creole. Of course, it's kind of this, not racist-y term, but it's like, you know, black people have Creole. Because we do, we do, is like broken English. And um, of course, a Cossack would talk, would talk a bit more Russian than the, the person from Kazakhstan. But... Um, I, I really do believe that anything that is derived from the mother language of the colonial powerhouse is a Creole. So even the French on Ceylon and Morocco have Creole. And let's not get it twisted. There's Low German, High German, Roundabout German, Turn Left German, um, Alsace-Lorraine German. So even in the colonies themselves, it's not an actual perfected language. Some people from Bourbon might talk different from somebody from Champagne, and somebody from Champagne might talk somebody different from Paris. La la la, di la la, to la tu de te conduire. So anyway guys, um, I had a night terror thing, so that was like kind of weird, but I survived. Amen. Anyway guys, I'm going to end the video here because I've been talking for more than enough time. 
but if you want me to dive deeper into Creole and um, Quadron Balls, I will have a video about like was it better to serve on your knees than die in the field or something like that you know like was it their only option and some actually went on to be very accomplished business women and abolitionists so was it the means to an end like so anyway i will leave that up to you that is the question of the day to be a quadron or not to be a quadron is that the question anyway guys i hope you enjoyed i hope i wasn't too fast i did open my mouth a lot so hopefully that would kind of slow down a little bit because my mouth is opening more and more so the more you open your mouth the less air has to escape that quickly so it's more controllable so um enjoy and i'll see you next time and it's not actually that tiring because i've been talking for 20 minutes non-stop well, I had to take off the dog cage and then come back, but basically. So if you hear somebody calling my name, forget it. Good night. Learn something. White women, they are educated in the convents. But uh, the quadroon beauties, for obvious reasons, cannot be. So, a friend of mine tells me. Through my friend, you could uh, arrange, so to speak, uh, a small class in a petit maison on uh, Esplanade Street. No? Colonel, and Marie, and my daughter, Carl. Monsieur. Monsieur does have a name. Okay, Caleb. Caleb Wycliffe. I didn't uh, realize you people could speak English. Please, monsieur, begin. Uh, <clears throat> these are what we call vows. A, E, I, O. She's so beautiful and such intelligence. Cherie, I have heard the room.